Hi, this is Warth, and in this tutorial, I'm going to be teaching you how to create an XML-driven video player, where you'll be able to just change a simple XML file and update your website or application to what videos you want displayed. I'll give you a preview. Now, I know Pokemon are evil. They like to crash into things in the sky. If you ask me, they're the cartoon Al-Qaeda of this millennium. And just by pressing these buttons here, I have a few videos where I get to preview them and, you know, look at them. I, look at that. Oh, Char no, Charlie, don't do it. You silly boy, don't, don't. I know he bit you. What are you doing? Oh, Lord. Don't, don't do it. Oh, no, Charlie. Well, anyway, Char after Charlie finishes eating his finger, what you need to know is that this is really simple, and we're going to use Flash components instead of... Oh, my God. Charlie. I'm trying to do a tutorial here. Well, anyway, let's get into it, and I'll show you how to create this video player. The first thing we need to do is create an XML file. We've been creating XML files since we first started creating XML files. So, if you don't know anything about XML, you need to go learn. Somehow, some way. But anyway, let's just look at what I have here. I have a playlist, the root node, and inside of this root node I have my video, which has an SRC, which is where the source is, and I have a title, which I will be using for the source of the video, of course, and the title of the video. So. Let's save that into the same directory. I'm saving it as videos.xml. So there's not much going on in the FLA that I've created. I have an ActionScript layer, and I also have another layer that has all my content. I'll lock my ActionScript layer, and let's look back in the content to see what I have. I have a dynamic text field, which I named T underscore TXT. And I also have two buttons, one I named BTN2, and BTN1. You should be able to create all this without any problem or any quarrel. So what we're going to do is we're going to have head over to the window and in the window we're going to go to components. So all you have to do is navigate to video, the FLV playback, and drag and drop on screen. That's it. And we have ourselves a video player. And I'm just going to align it with the align tool. Now we can comp now we can close this component window and we're going to go head back to window and we're going to hit component inspector with our FLV playback component still selected we can change some of the parameters and here's a few things that you might want to change we have the scale mode which allows us to change or maintain the aspect ratio play with that I'm going to go with exact fit so whatever size I make it it's gonna stay that size because you can change it up using the free transform tool this also the skin which is very important the skin also allows you to change what your user gets from the experience of your video player for instance me I only have a play button and a mute button but depending on what you click on your skin will show up in different places uh, on top of the video under the video it may give you more options than the previous skin so pick your skin and you also pick the color of the skin so that's very important to know with all that options and all that jazz out of the way we're gonna have our component still selected and we're gonna head over to the properties and give it a name I'm gonna name it vid with everything named and looking in shape I'm gonna go head over to my action script 3 layer and go into the action script. So the first thing we need to do is create a variable which is going to be a loader which will load in our XML file. So that loader up here, this variable loader is a URL loader and we assign it to a new URL loader. We're going to add an event listener to that loader and that event listener listens to when the loader is complete and when it is complete is going to call the function XML load. The next three items is a variable which is our XML variable and we set it to new XML the amount of vids this is how many videos we have in our XML accounts and we have the current video which says which video are we on because these videos aren't people 
they're only numbers. So anyway, moving on, we have two event listeners that we add. These event listeners are for the button, and they do the next vid function and the previous vid function when you click on them. So this XML loaded function is the event listener for the loader variable that we just created. And what it does is, the first thing it does is we assign the data from that target into the XML variable we created. Now with, since now the XML variable we have created is, has substance, in other words the XML file, we can count how many of the videos are available in there. So I go XML, which is the root, then video, which is how many of those video nodes I have, and we have the length minus one. The reason why I subtract the length minus one is because it counts from zero. So anything that you have is going to start from zero upward. So if I have it on one, it's going to be the second item. So start from zero. That's the way to go. The next thing we have is the change video function, which I'm going to be using over and over again. So let's ho head over to the button functions, which is next vid, which increments plus plus the current video. And after it increments the current video, we go to the change video function again. So we have the previous video, which does the same thing, but subtracts or decrements. And we call the change video function. Let's look at this ultimate change video function where we have a local variable which is CV or current video that number and we set it to the absolute value of the current video in this if statement we're checking to see if the current video is greater than the amount of videos and if this is true then we want everything to be set to zero that means that it's gone beyond the amount of videos so go back to the first video for this state, this next statement, we have the if current video is less than zero. This means if it's gone off into the negative territory, we want to say, all right, you're going negative. That means you need to go to the last video. Because if you're on the first video and you go back, you should end up on the last video, which is the amount of vids. So we set everything to the amount of vids. And now we're using the XML to change items, which we change the title, which is t underscore txt dot text, and we assign it to the XML dot video dot this at sign, which is how we access attributes, title, and CV, and this brace, which will get it to whatever number we want to get it to. And we also do the same thing, but we do it with the source or the CRS. And we also assign it to the source of that vid that we created. So vid.source is equal to xml.vidio.src. So that's how you do it in a nutshell. And the last line of code that we have is we want the loader to load in the XML file, which is videos.xml. So loader.load, new URL request, I can't say that word, new URL request videos.xml and the last thing you want to do is just save your video or your FLV in the same directory as your videos and everything will turn out great let's try it out uh, we have that evil bird again crashing into things you know demon bird we have the greatest singer in the world and we have a hungry baby probably somewhere in England, UK area. Charlie, evil. Well, anyway, if you're confused by any of this, head over to my website, onenterflash.com, where you're able to download the FLV and just play around with the source code all you want. Ooh, ooh, I know. Well, anyway, if you want to help out, rate, comment, subscribe. <laughs> oh, man. And if you really want to show some love, go to my website and donate or click on an ad to help me and Charlie out. He's a hungry baby, obviously.